Hi friends, my name is Bruce Herman. I'm coming to you today from my studio here in West Gloucester. I'd like to share a few thoughts with you for our homecoming uh, celebration. I'm doing a Scott talk. My topic today hovers around questions about beauty or works of art or poetry in a time of pandemic. I'd like to switch now to a screen share uh, so that I can show you some slides. And I'll come back uh, and share with you a bit more after that's done. The title of my talk is Beauty for Ashes, Art in a Time of Pandemic. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness from Isaiah 61, a messianic prophecy. And there is a spirit of heaviness on our land. We are mourning. We long for beauty in place of the ashes of a culture that seems to be burning down before our very eyes. We do not want merely to see beauty, though. Oh, God knows even that is bounty enough. We want something else which can hardly be put into words to be united with the beauty we see, to pass into it to receive it into ourselves, to bathe in it, to become part of it, from C.S. Lewis. But is such beauty possible in a time like ours, a time of suffering and evil? What's little known is that that quote from Lewis is from his Weight of Glory sermon delivered at University Church of St. Mary the Virgin in Oxford, June 8th, 1941, at the height of World War II a month after the end of a horrific year-long German bombing campaign, the Blitz, which had nearly destroyed London, killing more than 40,000 and seriously injuring nearly 150,000, completely destroying more than 60% of the homes in London. Lewis delivered this sermon a mere two months before the Holocaust began, the Jewish genocide in Germany. Years later, in the late 40s, the critic Theodore Adorno says, to write poetry after Auschwitz is barbaric. Adorno, in his essay, Cultural Criticism and Society, is writing about his concept of reification, a modern trend he saw toward a state of society in which individual enjoyment and subjectivity are absolutized resulting in what he calls an open-air prison, a prison of the self, blinding us to the suffering and injustice around us. Hence, his idea that poetry or self-satisfied aesthetic pleasure is a sign of heartlessness and barbarism in the face of the sufferings of others. So what is genuine beauty, authentic poetry? Again, is, is it possible in a time of terrible suffering and evil, a time such as ours, a time of pandemic? Well, what I'd like to do now is share a little bit of my response to this question, along with two colleagues of mine, a poet from England named Malcolm Geit, and a composer, uh, Jack Redford. We worked on a project together for a couple of years, and we've recently launched a, an online immersion experience to go with that, and I'd like to share that with you now. Welcome to the Ordinary Saints project uh, or to its online presence. This is a project that uh, the artist Bruce Herman and composer uh, Jack Redford and I have been working on and collaborating with together uh, over some years and it's a collaboration that continues. And our aim was to use the three art forms that we each uh, I profess uh, painting and uh, composition of music and poetry really with the single simple aim of clarifying our vision of one another as human beings made in God's image of opening eyes and ears and hearts uh, to the mystery and beauty of God's presence in and through one another it's all turned on what it means to be face to face, to meet with one another face to face. 
and we've availed ourselves of the clarity and patience and attention of Bruce's art as a painter in restoring a kind of attentive gaze one to another and I've drawn out some of what that means in poetry and Jack has used music to open the deeper parts of our soul to the experiences of both the painting and the poetry. Now we had originally intended this as entirely in physical spaces, in actual places where you would stand before the wood and the canvas and the gold that is on those paintings and hear live musicians breathing the same air as you and hear me stand and read the poetry and we wanted to do that because the aim of the whole project was not to abstract you into further art but to restore you to the wonder of the art which you and your neighbours are made even as you stand and breathe by uh, the prime genial artist as Coleridge would have said by your lord and maker now we find ourselves in lockdown, we find ourselves in isolation, but actually the need for this clarity of vision, the need for this attention one to another is greater than ever. And so far from eschewing the online, Bruce and Jack and I have decided that now is the time to share this work online, now is the time to show you these images. Not because we think that this is entirely adequate, but because we hope it will be a training of vision for you and for all of us, so that on the day when we are released and able, gladly and thankfully, to be in one another's presence, it won't be a hasty glance, we won't be stayed on surfaces, but we will be able to see more deeply. These paintings, as I, I, I put them in the music and the poems, in, in the final poem of the sequence, the epilogue, I, I spoke of a hope that faint traces of God's image and his glad presence in humanity will have shone a while for us in paintings on a wall, the dark glass brightened and the shadows gone. But at the end of that poem, I ask some questions, and I hope these are the same questions that you might want to ask yourselves as a result of engaging deeply with everything that you can find on this Ordinary Saints Project website. How shall we know each other now? Will all that we have seen recede to memory, or is our sight restored? And having gazed on icons in this place, will clarity transfigure all of us? We turn amazed to see the ones beside us face to face as living icons, sacraments of grace. I don't know how long it will be until we can look each of us on some beloved face which is absent from us in this lockdown. But I hope that when we do, and perhaps partly through this art, we will indeed behold one another again as living icons, sacraments of grace. Hi, I'm back. Um, hope you enjoyed that little introduction to our project. It's really our response to larger questions than even the one we're considering here about the pandemic. And that is, where does beauty come from? And, and what is true beauty? It is rooted in God, just like truth and goodness. The classic trivium, goodness, truth, and beauty, the great transcendentals. And so human beauty, uh, works of beauty, poetry, music, art, are derivative always, just as all truth is derivative of the truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth. Um, it's rooted in the person of God. And, and beauty is as well. So of course we need works of beauty in times of suffering. We need God at all times. And when we're rejoicing and when we are grieving, and I believe beauty is a great comfort. Uh, it is a way not of escaping from reality, but penetrating more deeply into it. As Lewis says, to bathe in it, to become part of it. Because we want, ultimately, we want communion. And that is the heart of the artistic enterprise when it is not entangled with uh, arrogance and fame-seeking and other corruptions of the art-making spirit. The, the source, the true source of art, is the great artist himself, and he is breathing 
into us and through us that same beauty, which is for the healing of the nations. As it says uh, in Isaiah 61, he will give us beauty for ashes. And we will rebuild in the ruins. And that is what we're called to do as Christians, is not to cave into despair, not to resort to violence or to other sorts of quick fixes to, uh, to drive out our imagined enemies. Because, you know, our enemy is not flesh and blood. And so it, it, requires, um, it requires weapons like truth and beauty, not weapons of, of destruction, but weapons of creation. Not weapons at all, in fact, truth be told. It's really more about the embrace, the ultimate embrace, because it is love that brings healing. It is love that brings people back together. It is love that will heal us in this time of pandemic. So I give you uh, this word from West Gloucester. I wish I could be with you in person. Um, I send my love to all of my alumni friends, and, uh, and I hope that this celebration today at homecoming continues to just be joyful in spite of everything. Um, maybe this is a special time uh, where there's even greater intimacy because we are all suffering together through this time. Blessings from West Gloucester.